You're an ally? You're, not, you're a part of the axis. Please, dude. You're part of the axis of evil. You, I'm an ally. You are the patriarchy. I am. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm, I'm the patriarchy, uh, also an ally. You're like the, you know, there's like the girl flexing her muscle with a bandana of like the girls. Yeah. You're that dude of the patriarchy. It's just you like. <laughs> Riveter Rosie, you, <laughs> I think. Rosie the Riveter. Is that the name? Yeah. It's funny. It's the World War II propaganda. Getting girls into the, the factories. Broads to get them into the factories. Like, be like Rosie the Dyke Riveter. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Get in there and be a factory worker. That must know. have been funny, though. In the, when, was it, when was that? The 40s? Yeah. The 1940s. And like, we're going to the factory. And they're, fucking, they're in there for a week like this. Fucking They must have been sucks. like, oh, no. I, dude, can you imagine sending these fucking chicks to a factory right now? Yeah. Dude, I worked in a fucking ice cream factory. <laughs> and it sucks dick. <laughs> I, dude, factories fucking so You ever work in a factory? <laughs> Fuck no, dude. Factories are the worst. Oh, no. I've worked in the closest thing to a factory. I worked in a warehouse, and that was fucking dismal. Warehouses enough. are terrible, but... Nothing working, like a factory. I've worked on assembly lines. Yeah. I've worked on... I worked in a fucking... I mean, working in a, That's literally for the dumbest people. Yeah. I worked in a, a part of the ice cream factory where we were putting glue into a hot glue machine. That would seal the packages. So you weren't even part of the ice cream process. You're part Fuck of no. constructing like the Briars container. Oh, of course, Hershey's, <laughs> Hershey's ice cream, dude. And uh, imagine clocking fucking fifty also, years of that. Also, this is a be there. Your workday starts at five a.m. Of course, dude. You're at the fucking ice cream factory. So that means I'm waking up in my house in Mechanicsburg at four a.m. Dude, and working, dude. You would work twelve hour days. Of course you do. You would work five to five. Jesus Christ. Can you fucking imagine that? No. And it's all... It was just putting glue into a container for 12 what hours. Fuck, where'd you get this job? <laughs> My fucking dad, dude. He put you in the factory? My dad would give me the worst jobs he could think of. Your dad fucking eight miled you? My dad put me in a factory, yeah. They they pretty much fired me. Dude, you are B-Rabbit. I fucking... Oh, no, no. <laughs> B-Rabbit was working hard in the factory. <laughs> I was taking... I was figuring out how long I could sleep... In the locker room, in the break room, you got fired from the ice cream. There was factory. also uh, there was also a freezer that was like negative thirty degrees, <laughs> and you couldn't work in there longer than like a half hour at a time. Really? So it had to be a half hour on, a half hour off. Which that was a good job. Yeah, that's fucking great. You well, go fucking work, but when you're in the freezer, that's churning the cream though, dude. In the freezer, no, no, no. You never have to fucking. Dude, you weren't shooting. They're not letting fucking retards touch the ice cream. Yes, they are. No, they're not. I used to work at Brewsters, dude. I was a retard touching the ice cream. Well, maybe when they serve it, but I mean, like the factory workers. Yeah, you could touch it. Who the fuck have touching the ice cream? But nobody's making it. Those guys aren't making it. But they have like fucking have scientists machines, in there. Dude. They have machines. <laughs> oh yeah, they have robots. It just flows right into a fucking <laughs> vat. They have like white coat scientists yeah, fucking, fucking mixing the strawberries. Some guy from Duncan stirring <laughs> ice cream. Nobody knows Duncan. <laughs> Everybody there was from fucking Duncan. Everybody there had to commute like over an hour to get to this place. God damn, It was damn, the worst job man. I've ever seen in my Jesus life. Jesus Christ. And you had to wear a fucking jumpsuit. Of course. There was, guy, the there was a guy. There was a guy. All right, good. I got a good story. Yeah. Out there was a fat fucking guy next to me. <laughs> was he the tester? His locker next to me, <laughs> and he would always sleep on it. He would always sleep on my fucking locker. Oh. And he had, and he was always like half naked, and he had, uh, <laughs> he had fucking tan lines from wearing overalls. Oh. Like, so he had he had suspender tan lines, which means when he's home and cutting the lawn and all that shit. Just suspenders. Just this obese guy. And he was pretty much blind. And he and I worked in this <laughs> tiny ass room together. And he would just walk into me. Like I'd be oh standing there. God. And he would be from me to you. And I'd be watching him the whole way. He would just walk right into me. And I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing, Rick? <laughs> you guys are holding the hot glue guns? Well, that was when I was working on the uh, the metal that surrounds the giant cardboard containers. Oh, my God. There's a metal ring at the top of these big barrels. And you, it's literally like... So sharp. They would cut my fucking hands all day. And you're just literally metal ring on... Metal ring. Metal ring no, on. No, loading like 40 or 50 metal, long metal... I don't know what the fuck they are. Slices into yeah, yeah, this yeah. machine. That would then cir- make them a circle. This is never ending all day. Damn, dude. I can't explain that well at all. I know exactly, I explain no, exactly, I know exactly how about. all the factory workers do. But then one day, uh, towards the end of my illustrious career, of Rick the... Rick was taking a shit. Oh, my God. And I stuck my cell phone over the <laughs> stall 
Because I knew he was blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an old, fat, blind guy at this factory. <laughs> and I filmed him taking his shit. <laughs> Just for like 20 seconds. And then... Oh, my uh, God. And then I showed my sister when I got home... And she started laughing, and then my mom got a hold of it oh, and started fucking crying. No, my mom saw it and cried, and she was like, "Is this what you're into? <laughs> like, <laughs> filming blind guy <laughs> shit?" Was, <laughs> she was so disheartened by how shitty a move that was. She thought you were filming blind guys shitting at the ice cream Dude, factory. Dude, that's so funny. It was the worst. I used to sit there and try to throw shit into mm-hmm. this one guy's pocket of yeah. his jumpsuit. And then if I ever got one in, like a glue chip, yeah. if I ever got one in, I'd be like, come over here. You want to see a magic trick? And I'd show him a glue chip. He'd be like, watch this. Check your back pocket right now. And he'd reach in and be like, how'd you do that? <laughs> he literally didn't have teeth. He's the first guy I met that didn't have teeth. He had fucking, uh, he had no teeth. Dude, of course, you worked at the ice cream factory. You probably, factory only, you probably was... only ate ice cream for dinner. <laughs> I worked at the fucking ice cream factory. It was the worst. That sounds fucking horrible. That was a scared straight job. That was oh, like, dude. all right, I'm going back to school. Are you better. And then uh, one time my dad got me a job. You were in basically, you were in Wonka land in a fucking jumpsuit all day. It's, it's horrific. <laughs> Being an Oompa Loompa is, is the worst job you can have. Just, they fucking painted you orange and put green hair on you and sent you to the fucking ice cream factory. It was the worst. And, I got, uh, go ahead. Then I worked. My dad always just got me jobs. Mm-hmm. But he always made sure he gave me the worst fucking job. This is a good move. And then I worked at an auto auction where I had to clean out the repoed cars. Yeah, it's it's tough. All summer, just cleaning out. Jesus. And then in, during the day, and, and if your car gets repoed, you don't give a fuck about your car. No. Like, so there's diapers and fucking condoms. Yeah. And just, li- I mean, literally shit. In Especially if you know it's coming. If you yeah. know they're going to get you, it's like, fuck it. And uh, I had to clean those out. And that's, I mean, that's in the middle of fucking July, so it's like 120 degrees. Sucks. And like a hot. a fucking old Dodge Charger (laughs) filled with fucking shit. Just blunt guts and fucking King Cobra cans, dude. (laughs) And that's where I discovered that, uh, you know, say what you want about the African-American community, but they certainly do drive American vehicles. Hell yeah, dude. They love Dodge and Chevy. Dude, I like where you went with that, man. Yeah. I thought that was. I thought you were fucking. I saw you brace I thought you're, yourself. I thought you were piloting into a fucking mountain. I'm like, oh Jesus no, Christ! I you no, I mean, dude. say what you want about black people, but they, they do drive American. They drive American, dude. Fuck yeah! Black people love Dodge. Yeah, Dodge fucking Chargers. That's good. Chevy Impalas. Yo, all of it. Loving that. You you leave a city, you will not see one fucking Dodge outside of like a shitty pickup truck. <laughs> In the city, though, every other car is a fucking Charger. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. That's hilarious. Or a fucking Challenger. Or Damn, I never thought about called. how fucking patriotic they are. Black people are patriotic as fuck when it comes to their cars. Hell yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's fucking sick, dude. 